Hey guys, let's discuss current affairs and today's first question is about New Zealand. New Zealand has had a new Prime Minister and that's uh, Chris Hipkins. This is Chris Hipkins here on your screens and uh, that's a map of the Oceania region. You see here, is a, you know, Australia is pretty large. In fact, its area is about 76 lakh square kilometers compared with India's which is at about 32.87. Let's make it 33. Let's take the territory of some other country as well. Well, 33 lakh, a little though under 33 lakhs is India's uh, area, while Australia is about 76 lakh square kilometers, twice more than India's. And you should know that its population is about 2.26 crore, while India's population is what? One little over 140 crore. But we are not discussing Australia, just that because it actually occupies a large space in that map there. I just brought that in. Ladies and gentlemen, we have New Zealand here. This is New Zealand. Okay. Now, um, this is a pretty large country and large in the sense that among island nations is the sixth biggest island country. Sixth biggest island country. It has a total area of, I wouldn't want you to, you know, remember this, but become familiar. The idea behind, you know, sharing this information is to make you familiar. 2.68 lakh square kilometer. And it's now, while it's 2.68 lakh, um, its population is about 47 lakh. Yeah. So you take uh, something like, um, you know, um, somewhere midway between Maharashtra and maybe Maharashtra is 3.07 lakh square kilometers. The next one is uh, Uttar Pradesh 2.4. Now you know what? So Uttar Pradesh's area is 2.4 lakh square kilometers and its population is about 22 crore yes look at that 47 lakh uh, because it's remote and second thing is um, you know it's it's not it's it has extreme climates especially the cold season now um, i want you to become a little more familiar with this part of the world its capital is uh, wellington new zealand's capital is wellington This guy is a prime minister and he succeeds Jacinda Arden who says that who before her resign resignation she said that I am burned out. That's what she said. Jacinda Arden is the outgoing, you know, is a previous prime minister. From Hipkins from her party has succeeded her. And um, how far is uh, New Zealand from Australia? This stretch you see here is about, you know, 2000 kilometer away and here up here is Fiji which is thousand kilometers then from the northern part basically you know in fact this is all New Zealand you see this these islands these are all New Zealand so from New Zealand's nearest island to Fiji would be 1000 kilometers that's it okay so and I want you to become a little more familiar with one more part of the world uh, this part of the world in another sense who discovered New Zealand New Zealand was discovered in, you know, uh, 1642 by a man called Abel Tasman, an explorer called Abel Tasman. Abel Tasman gave his name to the island of Tasmania. This is the island of Tasmania, which is part of Australia. Okay. But um, for a long time, it was colonized by Britain and Britain occupied uh, New Zealand between 1841 and 1907 so between 1841 to 1907 britain ruled this area as a colony in 1907 new zealand gained a dominion status which we gained in 1947 for some time for about three years we were still a dominion there now uh, till we became a republic but new zealand is not a republic because at the time of its you know dominion status um, gaining the dominion status in 1907 it agreed to have the British monarch as the head of its own country. So New Zealand's head of the state is the British monarch. King Charles III is still the head of New Zealand. That's the case with Australia and Canada as well, hmm? among large countries. So that's New Zealand for you guys. Uh, shall we look at the leaders of these countries? Yeah, we'll just look at the leaders only. We'll not look at more than that, okay? South Africa, the president is a guy called Cyril Ramaphosa. Cyril Ramaphosa. 
Australia's Prime Minister is Anthony Albanese. Anthony Albanese. Canada's Prime Minister is Justin Trudeau. Okay, there we go. And Austria. Well, Austria doesn't. Austria is a European country. It is in the heart of Europe, next to Switzerland on its east. Australia has a chancellor uh, who is the head of the government, and the chancellor is Karl Nehammer. Karl Nehammer. Okay, there we go. I guess we discuss this quite comprehensively. Which has become the first country to extend assurance to Sri Lanka for its debt. The B is silent in debt. Debt restructuring with the International Monetary Fund, India. India has done that. India, you know, uh, has extended aid worth $4 billion, a little over $4 billion. If India weren't there, New, you know, Sri Lanka would have met a fate worse than that of Lebanon, which went, which defaulted. Argentina, which defaulted on its sovereign debt. Yeah. So things would have been very bad in Sri Lanka if India had not taken care of it at the right time. So this $4 billion is not pure cash. It's in the form of a lot of deals, agriculture stuff, that food grains, fertilizers, tea, you know, um, electricity. If we are setting plants there, all that stuff. Okay. So a little about the IMF, International Monetary Fund. Um, you know that the International Monetary Fund is headquartered in Washington. It's headquartered in Washington, D.C., which is the American capital, District of Columbia. Its chief is, its CEO and MD is Kristalina Georgieva. Kristalina Georgieva, she's from Bulgaria, okay? She's from Bulgaria in East Europe. Then we have, uh, let me write it here. Um, okay, why not here itself? Geeta Gopinath, Geeta. Okay, I wrote Gopinath first, Never mind. it's okay. You can put a comma and then write Geeta. You know, that's one way of writing it. Because often in the, you know, in the Western world, they write the surname first. Or the you know the, the the name that is the second name second second part of the name, Gita Gopinath. She's uh, she's from the U.S. Of course, she's from the U.S. And what is her role? She is the first deputy MD. First deputy MD. Okay. The center has called upon bankers to ensure the availability of at least one banking outlet within five kilometers of all inhabited villages in Dash Aspirational District. It's more than mention. This is to primarily to take banker to, to promote financial inclusion so that no one's left out of the formal banking system. Okay, so I guess there's barely anything for us to discuss here. Norovirus was recently in use in India. Choose the correct statements. No, there is again these kinds of questions are like you know everything's on the screen. So all of these statements are right. So what is what is the norovirus about? It's a, it's a pretty contagious virus. It's mostly spreads through you know contaminated food and uh, water. Also, in, if is if if uh, a person is in direct contact with an infected person. Okay. The symptoms would be like diarrhea, vomit, fever, headache. When it was recently found in, um, um, you know, two school children, school going kids were found to be infected with this virus. Okay. Yeah. See, when you say, look at Arunakulam, Arunakulam. Arunakulam is uh, a twin city. It's a district here that's mentioned. But Arunakulam and Kochi are twin cities. Arunakulam and Kochi are twin cities. Okay. To step up security along the India-Pakistan border in Gujarat and Rajasthan, which of the following forces launch the Ops Alert Exercise? Ops is Operations Alert Exercise. The Border Security Force, BSF. Okay. Now, let me tell you a bit about the chiefs of these organizations. 
the BSF, Border Security Force. This is the chief of the Border Security Force who also happens to be the chief of the CRPF. Okay, Central Reserve Police Force. And the name is, um, let's write here, Dr. Sujoy Lal Thausen. Dr. Sujoy Lal Thausen. Okay. In some places you will find um, this to be O and this to be U. Both are fine. Don't worry. See, I have found spellings quite different in different sources. Like, for example, we have a name like Mao Zedong. This is we, how we usually write. Then there is Mao Zedong. It's the same guy. Is there a link between these two? There is no link. It do, they don't appear similar, isn't it? But then that's how people write. So, Dr. Sujoy Lal Tausen, an IPS officer, is the head of the Border Security Force and the Central you know, um, Reserve Police Force. Next comes um, the National Security Guard. It's headed by Director General M. A. Ganapati. M. A. Ganapati. ITPB is uh, Indo-Tibetan Border Police. Indo-Tibetan Border Police. Indo-Tibetan Border Police. It's headed by Dr. Anish Dayal Singh. Dr. Anish Dayal Singh. The last one. Central Industrial Security Force, which protects all airports, you know, um, nuclear establishments, has a lot of public sector units. Central Industrial Security Force is headed by Doc, uh, no, not Doctor Sheel Vardhan Singh. Sheel Vardhan Singh. Sheel Vardhan Singh. Which UN institution dedicated 2023 has dedicated 2023 as the International Day of Education to Afghan women and girls. Uh, Afghanistan's government, um, you know, which is a Taliban government, um, has banned access to education for women. So women cannot access to education, schools, higher, I mean, you know, colleges, universities, everything's banned. No education for girl, for the girl child is what the government of Afghanistan, you know, has stated. So, um, the UNESCO has dedicated 2023 to the children, to the women in Afghanistan, um, you know, because they have been denied the opportunity to learn to educate themselves. Afghanistan, ladies and gentlemen, is run by interim prime minister. The name is... Interim Prime Minister, the name is Hassan Akund. Hassan Akund is an interim Prime Minister and the leader of the Taliban, you could write this Taliban chief is, in fact, they call him Amir, E M I R, Taliban Amir. Uh, he is uh, Hibatullah Akunjada. Hibatullah. Akund Zada. Batullah Akund Zada is the chief of the Taliban. Hmm? Shall we look at these choices here? Hmm. United Nations Development Program is headed by Ashim Stainer. There is no DG, there is no Secretary General. He is called Administrator. He is called administrator. Ashim Strainer. Uh, Strainer. He is of. He holds dual citizenship of Brazil and Germany. Brazil and Germany. United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund is a old full form of UNICEF. Now it's simply called United Nations Children's Fund. What is it? United Nations Children's Fund. So. 
United Nations Children's Fund is headed by um, Catherine or Kathy Russell. Kathy Russell. Kathy Russell. United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees is uh, Filippo Grandi. Okay, this guy is from Italy and Kathy is from the US. Okay, Filippo Grandi from Italy. UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization is um, you know, he's headed by Audrey Azule. Of France. Of France. Chali. Yeah, the International Court of Justice, ICJ. Its um, president is No Juan. Or it's since it's Spanish, Juan. Otherwise, you could simply say Joan Donoghue from the U.S. President Joan Donoghue from the U.S. Okay. Yeah. The Egyptian President Abdel Fateh Al Sisi was the chief guest at the Republic Day function. Uh, you know, 2023. What are the uh, correct statements about Egypt? Well, all of them are because Cairo is the capital, also the largest city. There are, Egypt is home to the pretty ancient civilization. So, you know, um, a lot of monuments like the Giza pyramids, you know, the necropolis. Necro is dead. It's a city of the dead. Necro, necropolis means city of the dead. You will find all of this, Abu Simbel, you know. You will find a lot of things in um, Egypt that relate to you know, a period that's older than 1500. Yeah. On the north of Egypt, uh, you would find the Mediterranean Sea and on the east, it's Red Sea. Fair. The currency is a pound and a Suez Canal, as you know, is an artificial gateway that connects the Red Sea with the Mediterranean Sea. Now, I want you to know a little more here. You see this Medi, Medi is middle, Terra is land. E A N in the end of a word indicates a water body. So a water body in the end of in the in the center of the earth is Mediterranean Sea. Red Sea, the name comes from the presence of a certain algae which gives a color red. The water appears red because of the presence of a certain algae. That's it. Okay. Suez Canal, you could say 1869, 67, 69. That's when it was started. Hmm. The center has nominated Charaidya Maidams, the equivalent of the Egyptian ancient Egyptian pyramids for the UNESCO World Heritage Site tag. And these are in Assam. I want you to write a bit about this. You could write this. Um, Maidam, Maidam, Mound Burial System, Mound Burial system on Mount Burial site. See, okay, write this dash. Mount built, mound built over, mound built over the grave, the grave of the kings of, of the rulers of a home, a home dynasty. Ahom Kingdom, Kings of Ahom Kingdom or Ahom Dynasty. Hmm. I want to try, see this is it. There is a grave here inside and this is a mound. Okay. And this is a map that would tell you a little about when was the Ahom Kingdom around. Between 1241 and, no, I think 1250, 18. Yeah, 1253 to 1841, so 1826, this is uh, five years. So this, look at the size of the kingdom, pretty large kingdom it was. Mm? And right through its center, you know, the Brahmaputra would flow. So you could write this, a home kingdom, a home kingdom, 
established 1241 AD lasted till 1816 AD okay next next one um next one shall i tell you a little more about this kingdom itself founded ahom kingdom founded by ahom kingdom founded by shao lung sai or sia in some places you will find sia some places you will find siu okay oh i have found because these are very difficult to pronounce words for people like us who are not familiar with the culture the language the you know the you know the, the, the way of life there so very difficult so different spellings depending on who is writing but this is the generally accepted spelling shao lung siu kafa is the person who founded the ahom kingdom in 1241 when 1241 in 1826 the ahoms ruled this place the you see this charadio is was the initial capital first capital though the capital kept moving you know it still you know it remained the one of the most important areas in that part of the world okay see this is charadio Got it? It's a fascinating world. This is you see this Meghalaya. The chief ministers would you want to write? So by the way, the government of India has decided to nominate only one entry from India for the cultural tag for the in the cultural category one territory one. Entry has come from India, and that is of the Sharai Dio Maidams. Yeah. This is our culture, our composite culture. We got to protect it. We got to ensure that it is, you know, it it lives into the future. Okay. So, um, Tripura's chief minister. Tripura is India's third smallest state. The smallest is by area. The smallest is Goa. Second is Sikkim. Third is, you know, uh, Tripura. Tripura's capital is agartala agartala assam dispur guwahati mizoram what is it aizol meghalaya shillong manipur imphal imphal Okay, I guess that should be it. Who of the following persons has been appointed the next director general of the Directorate of the Civil Directorate of Directorate General, Directorate General of Civil Aviation, Vikram Dev? That now this has become pretty powerful, especially, and it's become pretty relevant, important in light of the kinds of incidences in the air and on you know aircraft at the airports and all. So I mean, things are pretty bad. There is always this, um, you know, thing that some passenger would behave weirdly, some flyer would talk, you know, nonsense to co-passengers or to 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 the crew members. I know it is always there. Yeah. So, what about these choices here? Pravin Kumar Shrivastava is the Chief Vigilance Commissioner of India. Chief Vigilance Commissioner of India, you could write this. Pravin Kumar Shrivastava, Chief Vigilance Commissioner of India. Rajiv Kumar is the Chief Election Commissioner of India. Chief Election Commissioner. Coming to Arun Goel and Anup Chandra Pandey, both are Election Commissioners. They are Election Commissioners. Election Commissioners. Arun Goel is the latest appointment. Who among the following are the winners of the 2023 India Open Badminton Championship in the singles categories, the both male and female singles categories, and um, this was held in Delhi. 
New Delhi. They may just ask you about the venue. So, Vidit San and Se Young won the men and women's men's and women's singles titles respectively. Who did they defeat? Runners up. These are runners up. Victor Excelson of Denmark and Akane Yamaguchi of Japan finished runners up. Okay. So. In honor of which award winners has India's um, Prime Minister Narendra Modi named the 21 largest unnamed islands in the Andaman Nicobar um, Archipelago. Archipelago is a group of islands. Okay. The Andaman Nicobar uh, has more than 572 islands. 572 islands. Archipelago, 572 islands of which 37 are inhabited. That is populated. People live on 37 of these 572. Okay. Now, um, these 21 are uninhabited. There is no one lives on these islands. And they have been named after Param with the heroes, the extraordinarily, you know, brave Param with Chakra heroes. Now, I want you to write a bit about this. You know, um, the awards in India, there are two kinds of awards, civil and military. Civil awards, highest would be Bharat Ratna, second Padma Vibhushan, third Padma Shri, third Padma Bhushan, fourth Padma Shri. So Bharat Ratna, Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan, Padma Shri, top four. When it comes to military awards, let me tell you, the military awards have, you know, uh, two kinds here. One, during war, this is basically non-peace time. Highest is Paramvir Chakra. You know, Paramvir Chakra. Followed by Mahavir Chakra. Second place Mahavir Chakra. And Veer Chakra. Third place, second place. So, highest award in military, during military, in the conflict times and everything, is Paramvir Chakra, second is Mahavir Chakra, third is Veer Chakra. But during peace times, military personnel are given different awards. Peace time. See, this is where I can add value, extra stuff. Ashok Chakra. Ashok Chakra. Followed by Kirti and sorry. Yeah, Kirti Chakra. Kirti Chakra and Shaurya Chakra. So effectively, this is equal to, you know, um, Veer Chakra. This is equal to Mahavir Chakra and this is equal to Paramvir Chakra. That's how you look at it. Okay? See, in 2018, three islands were renamed. Three islands in the Andaman Nicobar Islands were renamed in 2018. What were these? Uh, there was this island called Ross Island. Ross Island. It was called Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose yeah, Dweep. Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose Dweep. It's here. This is Port Blair. Okay. Next to Port Blair, you will find this. You know, um, the on fact, it's here. Next, you could write. Havelock. Havelock Island. Swaraj Deep. Neil Island, Neil, Shahid Dweep, Shahid Dweep, got it. Okay, yeah. How 
big is is Andaman Nicobar Islands. Not very big. Yeah, it's a unit territory. This is about 8,249 square kilometers. That's it. Hmm. It has a population of less than 4 lakh. Less than 4 lakh. Its capital is Port Blair. Port Blair is named after a Britisher named Archibald Blair. Okay. Yeah. You could also write only tri service command. Only tri service. Tri service means naval, army, and air force. Only tri service command in India. Only tri service command in India. Chha. Sure. Mm -hmm. The 126th birth anniversary of which freedom fighter was celebrated nationwide is Parakram Divas on 23rd January. The great Subhash Chandra Bose, my friends. He was born on the 23rd of January 1897 and he said to have passed, I say this because there is always this doubt, on 18th August 1945. On that day, see he had started from Singapore two days prior to that. Okay. He had started here. He went to Bangkok for refilling everything. Now he met some people there. From there he came to Ho Chi Minh City. From there he said to have flown to Taiwan. Okay. Now this was 18th August. The plane took off from here. This is the red line you see. The idea was to go to Dalian from there to Tokyo. But unfortunately on at the time of taking off the plane crashed because of overweight. Now, this is one plausible theory. There is one act more generally accepted theory. There are multiple theories. Some say that Subhash Bose lived up to Netaji, lived up to more than 100. He survived the, the accident and um, he lived as Gumnami Baba in India. Now, we don't know. Basically. There are a lot of stories around this. But this path will tell you that this is, you know, he started from Singapore to, you know, he went to Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City came to Taiwan on 18th August 1945 at the time you know just when his plane was taking off from the airport it crashed and went up in smoke and he said to have died a few days late two three days later people say some say he died immediately look this is how it is okay so let's not discuss this more than there India's first Scorpion class conventional submarine was recently in commissioned into the Indian Navy. Check the current statements. You could write this. Calvary class. Calvary class of submarines. Calvary class of submarines. Calvary class of submarines. Dash. Built on. Built on. French Scorpion model. French Scorpion model. Dra dash. Diesel electric. Diesel electric. Diesel hyphen electric. Attack submarine. Attack submarine. There are six of them. Okay. Dash. You put submarine dash. Project cost of 24,000 crore. Project cost of 24,000 crore. Next. Six submarines. Six. Dash. Six. Calvary. Khandari, Karanj, hmm, what is this? Vela, it's come. Vagir, that's just joined. And Vagshir, which will come in 2024, next year. Vagshir. See, Vagir is a kind of a sandfish. It's kind of a fish. 
sand fish Okay. Who will head a government appointed five member oversight committee to investigate the charges leveled by some prominent wrestlers, uh, charges related to sexual harassment against the president of the Wrestling Federation of India, Big Bhushan Sharan Singh. The famous boxer, multi world champ, multi time world champion, MC Mary Combe. Yeah. She's going to head this committee. Let's see where it goes because uh, the allegations are quite serious. And um, both the parties have dug in, you know, they say that look, we are right, you know, sexual harassment had happened. Well, the president, WWI, WFI president has said that, no, no, there's nothing like this. Some people, this is, there is a political conspiracy behind this. Now, don't know what is right, who is right. See, I would not like to sit in judgment. Okay. Let's see how things turn from here, how things move from here. Russia and Estonia expelled ambassadors from each other's countries in a tit for tat move. Identify the correct statements regarding Estonia. This is Estonia. This is Estonia. See, there are three countries called Lat Baltic countries Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Three countries. Okay. You see this small portion here between Poland and Lithuania. This is Russia. This belongs to Russia. Okay. Now I want you to know that Estonia is a Baltic country. Okay. It's a member of the NATO North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It's a highly developed country. It's, it has a high income. I mean, I think it's about $47,000, $46,000, dollars $46, is a per capita income. It's capital is Tallinn. Yeah, Tallinn, not Riga. Riga is the capital of Latvia. Riga is the capital of Latvia. See this. They are all parts of the Soviet Union. These three. Fair. This is Ukraine. Yeah, Ukraine. This is Russia. You see this is Baltic Sea. Now the Baltic Sea has probably the lowest salinity among all water bodies. Lowest salinity. S-A-L-I-N-I-T-Y. The salinity is the lowest because of certain geographical things here. This is a closed water body. You see this pretty little water from the Atlantic Ocean comes in. Got it? Yeah, and it's closed from the top. Now, I want you to pay attention here. There are thousands and thousands of rivers that drain into this. Drain means, the, you know, the water is released into this. Rivers have fresh water. Rivers have fresh water. So, as thousands of river water, you know, rivers drain their fresh water into the, you know, uh, you know, uh, the Baltic Sea, which is briny, salty, the salinity, salt content goes down. Got the idea? The salt content goes down. Consequently, it is one water body with the lowest salinity in the world. There's a lot to learn, guys. Hmm? We're just touching the surface. Oh, this is one of my, you know, this is one area that I love discussing, but we don't have any quick time for all these things. Now, by the way, Estonia's Prime Minister is Kaja Kallas. Kaja Kallas. Kaja Kallas. Okay? At which of the following places was India's largest biennial price services amphibious exercise? Amphibious means land and sea. Exercise named Amphex 2023 involving the th price services conducted. Kakinada, Rajasthan. So I don't think I need to discuss this anyway. Hmm? But there is one word here. Biennial. Biennial means C E N N. E N N. A N N means year. Right? Year. So by means two. Once every you know, once every two years. Once every two years is biennial. Once every two years. Okay. Ah. 
which regulatory body launched an information database on municipal bonds okay why shouldn't i tell you a bit about this sebi established 1988 the securities and exchange board of india was established in 1988 but it was given statutory powers powers to enforce its rate only in 1992 okay before that it was an advisory body so sebi head office mumbai its chairperson is madhavi puri puch madhavi puri puch okay yeah so telecom regulatory authority of, oh, by the way this is a regulator of the indian capital markets indian capital markets and stock exchanges stock exchanges this includes stock exchanges and stock markets indian capital markets where companies raise paisa it's a primary market and stock markets stock exchanges and markets okay so it's a my bap regulator of this sectors this particular area telecom regulatory authority of india telecom regulatory authority of india try regulator the telecom sector in india and see telecom that is cell phone companies and all then landline this is called basic telephony then isps internet service providers broadband services okay plus dth direct to home and ott what we call ott services so it is headed by p d waghela p d waghela let's go past this reserve bank of india we know niti aayog ceo you could write parmeshwaran ayer parmeshwaran ayer and um, pension fund regulatory and development authority is headed by supratim bandopadhyay supratim bandopadhyay which of the following indian films has been shortlisted for the 95th academy awards shortlist means a lot of countries send the entry okay in the best feature film category okay i'm i'm talking let's say one category feature film best foreign language foreign feature film best foreign feature film so we send our international entry now a lot of countries send like this so there is a long list of that includes the names of all the entries long list includes the names of all these of this about 10 are shortlisted i think 10 10 are shortlisted and within this 10 you know from this 10 five are nominated nominated means these five names are read at the ceremony from these five one would be the winner so a long list short list and then nomination that's a process so india's official entry see while these five have four have come in four different you know in different categories only one is an official entry this is the official entry of india to the oscars in the best foreign features film best for foreign feature film best foreign feature film some people call it best international foreign feature film never mind it's still the same thing international foreign are the same na best foreign feature film okay so cello show cello means is a gujarati with cello means last okay so this film you should not do things who is a director director is pan what is his name nalin pan nalin and the actor is bhavin rabadi bhavin rabadi rabadi is a, a tribe technically okay
typically shepherds goat herds that's ramadi hmm? you will find these guys in north gujarat and um, rajasthan yeah coming to triple r in my previous session <laughs> i remember that i had mentioned the incorrectly mentioned the name of the director of triple r as r r rajmouli it is s s rajmouli sorry yeah who are the following persons have been honored with the padma vibhushan see we mentioned a while ago that the padma vibhushan is india's second highest civil award the highest is bharat ratna to padma vibhushan 3 padma bhushan 4 padma shri okay yeah who are these persons here let's look at this mulam singh yadav foreign former defense minister of india also former chief minister of um, uttar pradesh sm krishna former foreign minister of india and former chief minister of karnataka ustad jakir hussain tabla maestro yeah tabla maestro or exponent one of the greatest exponents of tabla bal krishna doshi architect he has won multiple awards the highest award in the world of architecture is pritzker pritzker prize he has won that also it's a oscar a uh, nobel prize of architecture hmm? and he designed a lot of buildings like the most prominent would be i am bangalore i am bangalore dilip mahalanabis he passed away in october last year he was born in 1914 and he passed away last year my friends he is world renowned he had won multiple awards international awards huge number of international awards he popularized one particular life saving you could say concoction or solution the oral rehydration solution ors is oral rehydration solution okay shrinivasa vardhan oh my i you should read about him this guy is considered one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century he won the 2007 abel prize which is given to the best mathematicians in the world 2007 Nobel prize he was the first asian to win the nobel prize he is also is an american now he is also the winner of the national medal of national what is it called uh, i i don't exactly remember it's called yeah national medal of science yes uh, right national medal of science which is america's highest medal highest award given to scientists innovators and of course engineers Okay, he has got every award except the Nobel Prize. Yes, because the Nobel Prize is not given to mathematicians. There is no such category. You know, he got the Nobel, which is equivalent to the Nobel, equivalent to the Nobel, mathematics Nobel. Great man, my friends. He made extraordinary contributions. Astana is set to host the Fide World Chess Championship. it's not fide it's fidey uh in some time during april may this year astana is the capital city of kazakhstan see first this capital was called astana then the name changed to nur sultan what is it nur sultan yes it's named no nur sultan and again now it's called astana crazy hmm this is astana you can see here and i want you to be a little more familiar with this part of the world this is the world's largest land locked country largest land locked means no access to the sea so you may wonder what is this man bharat what are you saying this is an inland sea this is an inland sea that's not counted so it's the world's largest land locked country with no access to the sea okay the second largest land locked country in the world is next to it you see here that's mongolia this one 
hmm? Mongolia, huge country. Kazakhstan is about 27 lakh square kilometer, yeah, quite large. Uh, that would make it the seven, eight, nine. This would make it the ninth largest country in the world by area, and Mongolia has an area of 15 lakh square kilometers, pretty large. It too is. What about the choices? Turkmenistan. This is Turkmenistan, and the capital, as you can see here, Ashgabat. Ashgabat. Kyrgyzstan. This is here, Kyrgyzstan. Okay, and Bishkek. Tajikistan. Dushanbe. Uzbekistan. Samarkand. Or Tash, sorry, not Samarkand, Tashkent. I can give the names of the presidents, the leaders also. For example, Turkmenistan, Sardar Berdi Mohamedov. Don't write, that's why I didn't want to write. Sardar or Sardar Berdi Mohamedov. Tajikistan, it's Imam Malay Rahman. Plenty of them. Let's not overload ourselves. Let's take it easy. These are all parts of Soviet Union. Yeah, you see, we mentioned a while ago Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Lithuania three countries. Below that, um, Ukraine, uh, Belarus, four, five, Ukraine. Just below Ukraine to its southwest is a country called Moldova, seven. Okay. Then we have three countries here. You can see here Georgia, eight, Armenia, Azerbaijan. Yeah, Azerbaijan, so ten. Okay, sorry, uh, nine. And um, you have countries like Russia, 10, then 11 Kazakhstan, 12 Uzbekistan, 13 Kyrgyzstan, 14 Tajikistan, 15 Turkmenistan, 15 countries. Hmm? You can learn a lot of good things, my friends. To repeat, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, 4, 5, Ukraine, 6, Moldova, 7, Georgia, 8, Armenia, 9, Azerbaijan, yeah, 10, Turkmenistan will go in the order, Turkmenistan, 11 Uzbekistan, 12 Tajikistan, 13 Kyrgyzstan, 14 Kazakhstan, 15 Russia. So all these were parts of the Soviet Union. They were states in the Soviet Union between 19, 1922, 1922 and 1991. So in this period of you know about 70 years, these today's independent countries were actually states in the Soviet Union. Got it? The Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Minister of Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goyal, has launched the MARG portal for startups. MARG stands for MARG, MARG, showing the path. Hmm? MARG. Mentorship, Advisory, Assistance, Resilience and Growth. Oh man, they, somehow they come up with these wonderful full forms. How? <laughs> Let's not discuss this. It's hardly, oh sorry, sorry. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Name the portal launched by the Union Government to digitize India's immunization program. You win. You win. We have had the COVID, which was used, launched during the, you know, the vaccination, just before the vaccination for the COVID thing started. And that was a mega success, huge. You see, people like us didn't have to, didn't have to carry any data, any card that look, I, you know, um, you know, I, I was given this, um, you know, um, uh, vaccine on the so and so date because once you you know give, give the beneficiary number the COVID portal would have everything their own portal the, the hospital's portal and our own phone would have the COVID I still have COVID on my phone and I think a little <laughs> you know it's a little scary whenever I look at it uh, so um, you win if you want to write you could write this uh, single source of single source of single source of Information, single source of information for immunization services, immunization services, comma, or rather in brackets, like, like, dates of vaccination, dates of vaccination. So you get to know when and if it's over, what is the status kind of thing. So all in one place. Now we don't have to carry data. You don't have to see if got kids. You don't have to worry about when is the next jab. What's the next jab? Tetanus, this, that, all. So everything's mentioned here. 
once you enter the data it's there basically we are slowly moving away from paper to you know digital world my friends which is good for us in a first in the country which state government has implemented a policy for blindness control with the objective right to sight Pakistan see India's population is 140 crore of which about 1.1 percent 1.1 percent is blind this is one person, 1.1 person is blind. So the government of central government I'm talking of is uh, has launched multiple programs to bring this down to 0.3 percent in the next 20 years, next 10 years actually, 0.3 percent, which is I mean this is how it should be, my friends. Yeah, we should uh, if we could take care of the visually impaired, then it's better. You know we should be taking care. The problem in India is while there are a lot of blind people and people could readily access sometimes, most occasions otherwise sometimes, they can readily access you know, donors. There is still a stigma attached to that, donating cornea and all that. Why? Because somewhere we believe that, you know, if I would donate my, pledge my eyes and donate uh, at time of death and uh, my, you know, if I, I am cremated, buried, whatever, hmm? without eyes, then I would be born or I would go enter the second, the next life, see, whatever the world is, either born, the next one, or they enter the second life, which is like the other world, okay. I am not a religious person, so I will not get used to that. Um, um, you know, they, they, we would enter there blind. This is important that we live here through our eyes. But that's how the world is. Mm. You know, Rajasthan is India's biggest state by area. It's super large. 3.42 lakh square kilometer. That's the area. Which would make it 10% bigger than, you know, uh, that, you know, it is, it, it is more than 10% of India's area. More than 10% of India's area. 3.42 lakh square kilometers. Mm. So, who is the chief minister? Ashok Gehlot. Ashok Gehlot. Punjab's chief minister is Bhagwant Maan. Hmm. Um, Odisha, Navin Patnaik. Telangana, KCR. Kalvakuntla, Chandrasekhar Rao. K. Chandrasekhar Rao. Coming to Haryana. Um, Haryana's chief minister is Manohar Lal Khattar. K H A T T E R Khattar Manohar Lal Khattar. Which nation won the 2023 FIH Men's Hockey World Cup in Bhubaneswar? Fine. Right. Mm, Germany won it. Why don't you write this? You may get questions hmm, in one of those exams that you could be sitting for. So 2023 International Hockey Federation. That FIH is the French short form. Okay. International Hockey Federation, Men's Hockey World Cup in Bhubaneswar and Roorkela, two places, okay. Roorkela. Roorkela, it was held in Birsa Munda Stadium. Birsa Munda Hockey Stadium. Bhubaneswar Kalinga Stadium. Hmm. So much can be written, na? Hmm. You could write now. One winner Germany. Germany. Then runner up Belgium. Hmm, Belgium. Runner up. Winner. Netherlands, third place. India and Argentina, ninth place. India and Argentina, ninth place. Okay, next. Let me leave this. Clear this. Right. Best player. Best player. 
Niklas. No, I go slow when we write these kinds of names. Niklas Wellen. Niklas Wellen of Germany. I think Germany, yeah. Niklas Wellen. Next. Best young player. Best young player. Mustafa. Kasim. I told you about spellings. This is the way he writes his name. Okay, Kasim. And in some places you will find in 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 the you know in India and elsewhere you would find Q A S I M or K A S I M. Okay, so different places, different spellings. Best time player Mustafa Kasim, and he is from South Africa. South Africa. South Africa. Next best goalkeeper. Best goalkeeper. Vincent Vanash Vincent Vanash of Belgium of Belgium So all that you had to know about hockey world cup in Bhubaneswar and Roorkela he got it Okay chalo the monument mitra scheme which entails and uh, entails adopting a heritage site and maintaining it was transferred from the ministry of tourism to the ministry of culture now the best part about it is that you don't have to remember two different names for the minister of who is a minister of tourism and who is a minister of culture because it's the same guy who runs both the ministries okay so g kishan reddy g kishan reddy holds three ministries one tourism two ministry of culture okay and then donor development of north east region development of north east region development of north east region minister of commerce and industry piyush goyal Piyush Goyal, Ministry of External Affairs is headed by Subramanyam J. Shankar. Subramanyam J. Shankar. The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting is headed by Anurag Thakur. Anurag Thakur. Anurag Thakur also heads the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Youth Affairs and Sports. Youth Affairs and Sports. Okay. Next. Ministry of Education. Dharmendra Pradhan. Dharmendra Pradhan. Dharmendra Pradhan, he heads another ministry. So, Dharmendra Pradhan, he heads another ministry. Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. You can write Ministry of Entrepreneurship and Skill Development. It's the same ministry. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entre French is entrepreneurship. <laughs> Which country will celebrate its 75th anniversary of independence on 4th February? Sri Lanka. See, Sri Lanka was ruled by Britain, okay, for a long, long time. Between the year the Battle of Waterloo was found fought in Europe till this. So, but in 1815 and 1948, Britain ruled Sri Lanka. Britain ruled Sri Lanka. Okay. On 4th February 18, 1948, 
Sri Lanka is, you know, got its independence from British rule. Okay. We discussed Sri Lanka a while ago, so we will not go there. <clears throat> Pakistan, Bangladesh, we will just mention this. Hmm. Bangladesh was East Pakistan between 1947 and 71. In 71, it became a separate country. It broke away from Pakistan, became a separate country. Coming to Pakistan, what? 14th August 1947. Okay. So, I guess that should be it. Okay. Um, Maldives, Ibrahim Mohammed Sole. President is Ibrahim Mohammed Sole. Ibrahim Mohammed Sole. Hmm. Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina Wajid, Sheikh Hasina Wajid. Pakistan, Shehbaj Sharif is the Prime Minister. So these countries have PMs, Maldives as a President. Okay. Enough here. Yeah. Too much of stuff we've been writing. You know how big is Sri Lanka? 65,000 square kilometers. Yes, just 65,000 kilometers. And its population is about 2.2 crore. Yes, 2.2 crore. That's about it.